Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the sauce number 212 in a US 19 finish. I have one removed from its packaging, and here it is. 212. This is what would be a concealed hinge. Uh, for many years, it was the hinge that most people really thought of when it came to concealed hinges. And there are others that certainly exist on the market, but none of them quite have the name recognition uh, that Sauce does. And in my opinion, the simple elegance that Sauce does. Um, there are other hinges that exist that allow you to adjust it in three axis. Um, I have a well-formed opinion about that, which I'm sure that I won't be able to prevent myself from sharing. So this is what a 212 looks like. Uh, let's take some basic dimensional properties of it, and we'll talk about exactly where you're going to use it. We'll open it up as if the door's at not, uh, 180 degree. Overall height of the hinge leaf, so to speak, about three and three quarter. Its overall width, it's about three quarter inch. The, the overall depth of the body, it's about an inch and a sixteenth. And then the faceplate alone, it looks like it's about three eighths of an inch. These laminated steel plates are here with, um, I don't know the anti-friction shim plates that are between them. They might be nylon or something that gives a smooth operation. And then it will include four screws. And this is the US 19 finish and that is code for black. Now, what would you use this for? Let's talk about that now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Now you're going to use this hinge when you need to install a door, generally a door, and you want to use a hinge that's concealed is where you're going to use this. That's pretty obvious. Uh, that's pretty probably pretty clear to you if you're looking at this video. You want a concealed hinge. Uh, people will use this hinge though specifically when they not only want a concealed type of look, but they may have something that is heavier than standard. Uh, something that is uh, unusual in terms of its height or its weight. And in fact, we'll review the manufacturer's usage guide when it comes to not only the model number of the hinge, but the quantity of those hinges as it pertains to the width of the door, the weight of the door, and then the height of the door. It's called their nomograph, and we'll go over that. But generally, you want an installation where it's going to have a concealed sort of look, and when the door is closed, you'll, really, you'll have no evidence of how it's hung. Now, this sauce hinge has been around for several decades, and there are, the last couple of decades, hinges that can be adjusted in all three of those axes that I'm mimicking here. Um, and, you know, I've had, I, I, I've, I've had conversation, conversations with people who use those and prefer those. And I, my concern has always been that the mechanical adjusting to get the door to move in those directions is suspect. If it's a screw, it's going to get loose. That's the bottom line. I don't really want my door dependent on exactly where a screw is moved or tightened to. Now, one client in particular has told me that they've got them on the job site for 20 years and have are not aware of any problems. Um, you know, I have no reason to be thoroughly suspect of that, but in my experience, screws have a tendency to move or loosen. And I temper that opinion based on, I, I don't only sell these, but I've mortised for these countless times. And I think people default to that three-way adjustable style hinge because they're intimidated perhaps by this hinge or scared of getting it wrong. The bottom line is this. There's nothing to really get wrong on this. You have to have the proper center line of your door prep and your frame prep. Those have to be the same. Okay, whether it be a butt hinge or a concealed sauce hinge, that logic is the same. The other thing that you have to do is have the correct back set meaning the amount of the door before the prep starts has to be a specific dimension, or I should say not exceed a dimension. Okay, that's the same with a butt hinge. There's no difference there. You, it, that's the hinge back set. You have to allow for that and prep the door accordingly. Truly, the, because both of those requirements are universal, re, 
regardless of it being a butt hinge or a, a more exotic hinge. And I'll tell you, the only hinge that really baked my noodle, so to speak, when I was first trying to prep it was an olive knuckle hinge. That just, it took me an hour of staring at the template before I was really sure of what I was going to do. The only thing that's going to be different about this compared to a, a traditional butt hinge is you're going to have two preparations. You're going to have this preparation, and then you're going to have this preparation. So you'll do two depth setups. Sauce has a template that will make that much easier. So I don't feel that my skill, and I don't make a living as a field carpenter or a person working in a shop prepping for prepping doors for hardware. While I've done it countless times over the years, it's not what I primarily do. I would have no reservation or hesitation about using these straight away exclusively. I just think they're too elegant to be set aside as too complex or ah. The other reason I like these hinges a lot is because compared to those adjustable hinges, they're a lot less expensive, okay? So if you can, you know, in my opinion, if you can get the height correct, the back set correct, you can do these two preps, okay? You don't need to pay the extra money for the fact that you're never going to adjust them because you're machining it or mortising it correct from the get-go, okay? So let's switch to the screen view and let's look at a whole mess of supporting documentation. If you've not hit subscribe yet, we would very much appreciate if you did, and hopefully you're enjoying this video. Now, let's get back to it. Here is the hinge that we are indeed looking at. It's a SOS 212. Happens to be in a US-19. US-19 is the US system of, uh, it's a entry in the US system of finish codes. That US system was established in the very early 1930s. It was a result of uh, a government-led consortium of industry um, leading companies, and the reason the go government wanted to get these major uh, these major hardware manufacturers together was, is if you were to look in a Yale catalog or a Corbin catalog or a Sargent catalog from the year 1920 or 1880, you're going to see extremely imaginative names for finishes like Venezuelan. Um, antique bronze. Okay, I, I I have no idea what color that is, other than it's probably something dark, because the word bronze is in it. Um, and other very descriptive words used to describe their finishes. And these manufacturers would have a page full of finishes. The problem was, if you wanted the locks from Sargent, but the um, carpet bars from Corbin, and back in the 19th century, they made all kinds of stuff, and you wanted window hardware from Yale, there was no way to know that your finishes would match. And in fact, they wouldn't match. So the U.S. system was put together, meaning if it's U.S. 19 by Sargent, it'll be the same finish as U.S. 19 by Corbin. And that was the purpose of the U.S. system. Allowed the homeowner to be able to build a house and get cohesiveness in terms of all the finishes. So the 212, let's take a look at some photographs that we have. Here's the box. Removed with its screws and then the, uh, just a duplicate photograph. Here we go. A little close up of the knuckles, so to speak. That's a riveted pin that's there. The body, I believe, is zinc, which is an inexpensive material, but durable, will take a nice finish. These plates, as I mentioned earlier, are steel, but there are, they may be nylon. There's some, and, some very low friction separating plates inside of here. And that riveted pin is what gives it all the strength. The door perhaps at 90 degree. We have another set of photographs here when, the, when it's closed from the back end. You'll notice it says Singapore here. I happen to know that the engineering, the company I believe is headquartered in Indiana or somewhere near there, and their manufacturing plant is in Singapore. Another view from what would be the push side of the door. And then the screws that are included. Okay, there's a series of links below. Let's get to those, but first, the 212 is used for wood or metal applications. Here's an important aspect, and this is what you're going to consider when you are deciding what model to use. How thick is the door? 
The 212 is for an inch and an eighth to an inch and three eighths range of door thicknesses. It's made of zinc and steel materials. Nylon links provide strength and durability. The mid-range door hinge will provide superior appearance and durability. They're found in many applications where a flush, compact size, and smooth operation are necessary features. Sauce hinges will go to 180 degree, provided there's nothing that's keeping that from happening, but that would be the same sort of problem with any hinge, not only concealed hinges. Uh, and they are single acting, meaning the door swings in one direction when it when, you know, doesn't double act. Um, this will include wood screws. If you need machine screws, you'll have to specify that, and you can do so in the comment field, and then they'll send machine screws, which are 1024. I don't, I can't think of a time where I've needed to supply sauce hinges with machine screws that wasn't a much smaller hinge. Now, very interestingly, they tell us if you're pre, when you are pre-drilling the holes for a wood application, they use wired size. 43 and 31. Um, the wire size or the wire size index of drill bits is a much more fine increment between the different sizes and the true proper size for a number 10 wood screw you know I, I don't know what it is fractionally in terms of a drill bit size but sauce takes it to the next level of saying well if you're going into softwoods they're going to want a little smaller hole drill. The, the larger the number in an index drill bit is a smaller drill bit, smaller diameter. And if you're going into hardwoods, they want you to use this size. And uh, I have a set of uh, wire size. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find this easily. Um, A wire size set of drill bits. Okay, metal index size. So this index size is, let's see, we'll go to the catalog and then we'll be able to find the wire sizes. Yeah, so wire size drill bits. So they give you the equivalent. So a 31 was for hardwood. That's 0.12. Well, it's the decimal equivalent. So there is no fractional drill bit size that's 0.12 inch. I think the other size for softwood was 43. There really is no 0.089 drill bit size. Okay, And you can buy, if you were to do this kind of work enough, you can buy an entire drill index. A drill uh, index that are wire sizes is what I'm driving at. Okay. So that's what wire sizes are for. Uh, machine screws are not inherently included, as I mentioned earlier. If you need them, uh, make note of that. And they're priced and sold per hinge. <clears throat> when you buy one, we'll ship you one. <clears throat> okay, let's get to the review of these links that are here. Hinge sizing chart. This is what Sauce calls a nomograph. And this is used to determine um, what hinge number you're going to use and how many you'll use. So where you start this process of determining which hinge to use is first, how thick is the door? So right over here is where you're going to see minimum door thickness. So, you know, for the sake of the project that we're working on, let's say that our door is inch and three eighths. Well, we can use a 212 or we can use a 216. Um, you might say to yourself, well, I'll use a smaller hinge for two reasons. My doors, uh, maybe it's, it's a very low volume of use and maybe it's not very heavy and it's less expensive. So you decide on a 212. Okay, so you'll use a 212. Then you have your door width, uh, your door width here Okay, inches are on the left side. 36 inches is going to be right down about here. So they're obviously a two foot six door is what they're dealing with. And this chart has a 200 pound door. So in our instance, let's say that we have an 80 pound door. So we would draw that line from 26 to 80 and then continue on straight and then hit that line A and then go straight across. Okay, and in this instance, 
there are actually are no hinges if I've kind of done that correctly. Uh, probably, yeah, I, I, you know, just eyeballing it and then going straight across. Might be telling us four would be the proper quantity for a hundred pound two foot six door. This would be the 212 column right here. But you get the concept of how that's done. So the point of the matter is their nomograph goes up to 500 pounds. It turns out, and I'll show you another nomograph, um, that that's, this is relatively lightweight for sauce. And that's one of the hallmarks of sauce. They can hang extremely heavy doors. And it was said that the inventor of sauce concealed hinges once said, I don't care how heavy the door is, keep throwing sauce hinges at it. And I can tell you that I've personally hung a 14, um, check this out, a 4080 14 gauge steel stiffened hollow metal door onto which the client was laminating 12 gauge stainless on both sides. I don't recall the calculated weight, but we hung that on sauce hinges. Um, we used two 18s because the door, actually no, we used, uh, we used two 20s. Um, and we may have used five, I think is what, what we ended up doing. I don't recall, but it was, it was something extreme and it worked out really well. It may have been more, I, don't, I just don't remember. And they give us an explanation of exactly how you'll use this chart to determine what door you're working, uh, what hinge you'll need based on the door that you're working on. Uh, 90 degree hold open. I think this is a drawing uh, that's just, you know, it's, it's a line art drawing that's gonna show some dimensions based on a um, vertical axis of pivoting when the doors open at 90 degree. Um, it might just be a result of people being curious about those dimensions. I can't really say why I would want to know this X dimension. Um, and the reason I don't think I need to know it is because I don't extend beyond accepting the information that's on the template. I don't have a need to dig deeper to find out why something is. This is gonna be related to the hinge back set. What's interesting is that this hinge has a floating vertical axis of pivoting um, because of you know, where the uh, rivet is, these laminated plates. Now, let's take a look at cased jam detail. This is a common drawing where people are going to use sauce hinges in the sense that there is uh, a concealed look and they're showing you here, uh, they're basically showing you uh, what this is gonna look like when it's installed. And this reference to the letter E, that's the famous E dimension with sauce and we're gonna show you that on the template. You can't exceed the E dimension, but this is a more illustrated way by which to show you why it is you can't exceed this E dimension, which is the hinge, which is the back set, which is from the outside of the door or from the, from the, you know, I may have said push side earlier. It's from the pull side of the door to where the preparation starts. That's the E dimension. We'll look at it when we get to the template. Clearance detail is a document that just shows you what this can look like in different applications. The E dimension is the governing limitation on not only sauce concealed hinges, but all of them. They all must observe a maximum dimension here. But sauce gives you a drawing that shows different ways to be able to detail the face of the door and the wall or whatever it might, or the jam, uh, and what it would really take in order for you to accomplish 180 degree uh, door opening. And this drawing here is a good example of it. And what they do here is they show you just how close you get to material making contact. And that's a good way to illustrate that E dimension. If the E dimension exceeds what the template calls out, meaning if you push that preparation back further, that's where you're gonna have trouble. And you'll see that sauce will do a treatment like this because that's, that is definitely exceeding the E dimension those two pieces together. That will stop at 90 degree. In an application like this, um, I'm sorry, this will stop at 90 degree, this application. In an application like that stops at 90 degree, you're certainly gonna wanna consider overhead door stops. Um, 
those have to be ordered specifically for the hinge that you're hanging the door on because the templating is based on that weird floating vertical axis of pivoting. Then there is the template and the template's going to give you everything you need to mortise for this. So we've talked about the E-dimension. Let's dissect that. So the E-dimension is here, 3 16 out of 212. Now, we're calling it the E-dimension, but where does that come from? That comes from this reference on the line art drawing, which is shown here. Back of the hinge to the pull side of the door. That's the E-dimension. So back to our template. What are the mandatory dimensions. Well, the overall height of the hinge leaf, three and three quarter, understood. We know that we've got two and one sixteenth for the body. We have three quarter inch wide, and that will be for the plate and the body itself. So now we understand everything about that. That's super easy. The next question is, where do we put that? Well, you know that you cannot exceed three sixteenths. So make it three sixteenths or smaller. So let's just say you're making it three sixteenths. The final dimension is What's the center line? Or where are you measuring off of to achieve a uniform vertical dimension on both the jam and the door? That's all you need to know about this. And in 15 seconds, I just talked about how to mortise for sauce. So there's, again, in my opinion, not much of a reason to be intimidated by them. Um, given how elegant they are. So again, overall height, body, uh, height here. So if you're going to prep for this, my opinion would be is you're going to do a uh, you're going to do a one and five sixty fourths deep preparation for this, three quarter wide. Okay, off the center line, one and a thirty second of an inch in either direction. Then you're going to do the plate prep, and that's going to be three quarter wide, three and three quarter long, and it's going to be three eighths deep. And now your hinge is completely prepped. There's nothing else to do. You don't have to cut the face of the door at all. Nothing like that. So that's the template. Then, of course, we have the final link that was here, which is called Hinge Location. This is a document that talks about where to locate your hinges. Now, what's interesting about Sauce is they observe the way that, in my opinion, hinges ought to be placed. And it's not my opinion. If you leave the United States, you, this is how you're going to see doors hung. Fact is, is 70% of the door weight is hung by that top hinge. So Sauce says, well, why, why put one in the middle? It's not doing much work in leaving that top hinge to do most of the work. And they're wanting you to bias that hinge up towards the top of the door. So two hinges, three, four, five, and six. This is what they'd like for you to do. You're always biasing them towards the top of the door. The only thing, the only caveat I would have about this is make sure your door manufacturer would not decline a warranty review based on the location of the hinges. I would get that in writing from them. I've had manufacturers decline a warranty um, because of an improperly hung door and that is a reference to center hung pivots. Uh, so make sure that you get that cleared. Now the Sauce 212. Let's talk about the different finishes that this is available in. I can pull this up in all of the basic finishes, your brasses, your bronze, your chromes, obviously black, but let's go over it. 24 karat gold plated, that might be discontinued. Uh, these can be done in um, stainless base material, both polished and satin. They can, do, they can do this in an unplated finish. AB Supply, this is Richard. Yeah, you sent that to me seven days ago and I replied um, asking for the hardware sets. What was sent is completely inadequate for me to quote the job. I, I need to know what hardware, everything, you know, doors and frames, sure. But what about the rest of it? The bulk of the price, you know, the bulk of what would make the total quote. There's no hardware specified here. Yep, the same the same email thread from a week ago. 
Thanks, Misha. Bye. Okay, so phone call interruption aside, uh, unplated brass, a um, like an oil rub bronze, a US 10BL, that it's a lacquered oil rub bronze. It, the, the base material will be zinc, so it won't be a true oil rub bronze, but it will be quite complementary to that. The saw, the uh, 212 can be done in a bright nickel, in a satin nickel, obviously black, polished chrome, satin chrome. Polished brass, satin brass, antique brass, and then a white finish as well. So let's click on any of these hinges. Doesn't matter, the description is the same because uh, only the finish changes. There's a link below this video as seen here to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the sauce products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation, but also a link to the website but also a link to the full product catalog. And that's definitely worth diving into uh, because Sauce has more than hinges, but we'll focus on just the hinges. And as you scroll through this catalog, you're going to get to all of their hinges. You'll get to fire rated hinges, power transfer hinges, uh, hinges intended for substantially heavier grade and heavier weight doors than what the standard hinges can handle. You're going to get into fire rated versions, ones that are for uh, small furniture applications like barrel hinges. You'll get into uh, hinges specifically for metal cabinet installations. You'll get into the um, templates and the accessory uh, machining uh, items available to help you mortise for the material. So that's all in this catalog. That other nomograph that I had mentioned is here, the Hercules hinge usage chart. So if you get doors that are over 500 pounds, you're certainly going to uh, want to possibly consider this, what they call their Hercules hinge. Um, and again, same nomograph that they have here, same sort of um, approach to determining how many. I have sold some of these Hercules hinges. They are just substantial and they're heavy. An interesting development that Sauce has, and I don't know if it's in this catalog, it's not. Sauce has now a wide throw hinge. And a wide throw hinge is meant to account for an application where you have an unusually thick casing arrangement. So, some sort of unusual preparation that's really happening here. And that's how they account for this. So they're using, you know, this sort of trim detail. And what's interesting about this, it's wide throw in the sense that they're throwing the door out um, of the opening in a, in a certain sense. A wide throw hinge would have a vertical axis of pivoting that would be offset from the face of the door much further out. This approach allows you to completely conceal, completely conceal the door, meaning you can apply this, what's really drawn is, you know, something that looks like ranch casing, and you don't tell. You can't detect that there's a margin there between the door and the jam or whatever it might be allowing you to have a continuous wall of woodwork where doors, maybe closet doors, are, are really completely concealed. Um, you know, if you had touch latches, whatever the case might be, this is a great way to go about doing this. Uh, product brochure is here for that. You can dive into these wide throw sort of hinges along with the uh, template is here as well. But same type of approach. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you've made it this far into this video, you must be determined to see it through to the end, and we appreciate your hanging in there with us and watching this entire video. It means a lot. It takes a lot of work to create these videos in the sense that, um, you know, it's time taken away from doing other things. However, the advantage for me personally of creating these videos is the fact that it does allow myself to either learn about something new, to uh, reacquaint myself with something, or to reinforce what I believe that I already know. Any comments that you might leave down below would be greatly appreciated. Thank you.
In conclusion, if you have any questions on the Sauce 212 or any other Sauce product, please let us know. Um, there was one time, and I've been selling Sauce for about 30 years. There was not too long ago, maybe within the last year or so, a client came in and said he has a defective Sauce hinge. And I, I've never heard those words said um, about a Sauce hinge. I've never. Deck defective. Yeah, it just broke, he said. I said, what happened? Did someone sit on top of the door? Turns out that they took maybe Sauce 208s and they used those to hang a bookcase. Um, and while the bookcase wasn't, re you know, if you think of the woodwork of a bookcase, let's say that that weighs 100 pounds, and then you're going to put 300 pounds of books on it, you've got something really heavy. It wasn't nearly that heavy. It was really just more decorative than anything else. But indeed, the children opened the bookcase and then two small children climbed and sat on top of the bookcase and they literally took the hinge and the client brought in brought in the hinge and the hinge they didn't take the hinge that when the client brought the hinge here it was literally offset like this one leaf from the other and all of those laminated plates were just bent nothing broke nothing snapped but they literally bent from all of that excessive weight uh, and it was the only time that I saw a sauce hinge that was compromised, and it was obviously not a failure of the product. So when you take into account the uh, extreme simple elegance of them, their concealed nature, uh, they're, they're comparatively inexpensive, uh, and then you take away from that just what you have to observe, that E-dimension. You know, if you have, if you have three-quarter inch thick casing, and you want to go to 180 degree, a sauce hinge isn't going to work. In fact, there is no concealed hinge that will work. Uh, a pantograph hinge will work. And if you look up the word pantograph, you'll see this is not a hinge that's used in standard door construction. Um, with all of those advantages and just that small disadvantage, it's definitely a hinge worth looking into. If you have any questions on the 212 or any other sauce product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.